As deep as the sea No matter how rough Things may come to be You and me We're family Sing ho Hey long for the ride Ho Hey I'll stay by your side Ho Hey you'll always be Alright By me Yes you are nothing special let's say um, I would just say the electrics was the main problem really because um, like I was getting electric shocks when I was cooking so I kind of after a few days I thought this is not good because you know something that'll be it it might be it I might just die one bulb in there they've got the energy saver bulb which is good but we had to wait five days but then they gave us Wi-Fi so we could get on and do our video editing and um, also lots of YouTube videos which help the children with their teaching. All the toilets here are kind of Arabic style, so there's always a hose next to the toilet. And um, yeah, Ewan kind of sort of started trying to use it, and then Woody decided to use it one day, and it didn't go down well. And I don't really want to describe the aftermath, but um, I've banned using the Tunisian toilets, and we've got to use toilet paper. It's nice to be looking over boats. We were sort of in the hotel and that was kind of fun, there was a pool, but um, it's always nice to see the marina and see the boats and our friends have turned up as well with um, from Malta with their four girls and um, so we've had some great fun in the last few days and I think the best thing that the kids are excited about is um, there's a laser zone here in the marina which is really cheap because we're in Tunisia so they went twice yesterday and they're really looking forward to going once more again today. So I'm just hoping that's not the only thing they remember about Tunisia, which is the laser zone. The last time our son had been able to have any violin tuition was in Greece with Eileen. She was a lovely lady. She came once a week and he really, really enjoyed the lessons with her. When we got to Tunisia, we tried to find someone and we were helped by a lovely man called Ahmed. He um, helped us find a violin school and also a teacher and he even cycled us all the way there and back again. We're really grateful to have met Ahmed, he's a lovely person and um, yeah, we're still friends now. <laughs> um, the money situation in Tunisia is quite difficult. Our bank wouldn't transfer, or wouldn't do a bank transfer. The, the work overall was, was around about 17,000 dinar um, and we were restricted um, to 200 dinar per transaction per card. But we couldn't pay by visa either. So the only other way was to draw out the cash from the cash point physically and then give it to the, uh, the yard manager. The problem with that is you're restricted to about um, 90 euros per transaction per card. Um, every morning I would have to go to the, the bank with four cards, and draw out the maximum amount. Then one of the cards was swallowed, so we were, that was reduced, um, and we were a bit worried that we weren't going to be able to pull out the right amount given the time frame that we had. It was a bit worrying uh, cycling around the streets with wads of cash like that sticking out your back pocket. Um, th there's two schools of thought really when buying a boat, once you've got past the whole cat catamaran monohull debate and all that sort of thing is do you buy a boat under market value and use the rest of your budget to do it up and learn about the systems as you go along? Or do you buy a boat at the going rate um, from a good owner, knowing that all the systems have been maintained and, and upgraded? We opted for the, the former. We bought a boat under market value um, and held back uh, a fairly substantial budget to do it up. Now, that's great, you do do the boat up, you do learn about the systems, but you have no control of when these systems break down. Um, it could be at sea, it could be coming into anchor, it could be coming into a marina, you have no control of it whatsoever. Um, so there is a bit of a risk factor when it comes to opting for that option. 
obviously a surveyor doesn't pick up on everything in just one or even two days. Um, things start to go wrong once you start using the boat properly. Part of the reason we went to Tunisia was we could blitz the boat and just solve all those problems that we knew that the boat had. Tunisia is probably one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest place in the Mediterranean to get work like this done um, to, a, to a good quality. Also, working in a country, um, rather than just visiting it as a tourist, um, you get to see a part of um, the lifestyle and the culture that you would never normally get to see. fishing port, it's full of fishing boats and it, it's, um, it's a working port. Yeah. It's a dirty, grimy place, it's polluted, um, health and safety is not the priority really. There is a, a pack of dogs who live in the marina and I was attacked once and bitten. It's not the type of place you kind of want to take your family to really. You do kind of see things that kind of are a bit of an eye-opener when you're working in a place like that that isn't up to European standards and, uh, and on one occasion I did actually see one of the boats fall out of the cradle. Uh, which was a bit disconcerting a few days before you're about to put your boat back in. The strops of the crane were, were very, very grimy and dirty. Um, and even though we did have plastic put on the hull as it was put back in, as you'll see in later blogs, um, it wasn't enough to protect the gel coat completely. The train's come round again. Off you get everybody, off you get. <laughs> So we're finally measuring out the anchor because we never know how much anchor we put down really. Five metre length so we know how much we're putting out. I think he's worried about getting spray in this yard. So Woody's very meticulous when he works and, um, and I'm a bit more slapdash and I kind of just stick the links in basically. <clears throat> anyway, the job will get done. So when it was stripped back to the gel coat, there were some hairline fractures, uh, not serious ones. So uh, we've epoxied those bits and various other bits. So I'm going to let those dry, sand them off, and then it should be time for the barrier coat. It was a bit of an awkward repair this uh, because it's underneath the Genoa track and, and even though we got most of the screws out there were three which were seized in and the reason for that is there's a metal plate that runs under there which is rusted and expanded and cracked all of the uh, fiberglass underneath as you can see but because we can't get the track off we're having to kind of do a, a under the track repair so, um, Quite tricky. So we ground out as much as possible, uh, which wasn't easy with obviously the track in place. And now I'm just letting it dry and next, uh, next we try and get a gel coat match. So it's taken me over an hour to get this uh, track furler off and the reason for that, the salt crystals have managed to work themselves in between two bits and completely cemented it together and even now, even though I've got the screws out, I still can't get that apart. Basically I had to use my multi-tool to kind of cut the screws out and then just hammer it off. So basically just more brute force. So now it's off, I just need to put the new one on. There's water penetration in those screws up there and 
it means that the screw is now not gripping onto this so therefore the screw's loose so water's getting in because we had some drips over winter so um, we're going to take the whole panel off and um, repair the other side of this wood so that the screws grip in and um, then put it all back again loads of silicon okay top or bottom Okay, so I'm sanding all the wood on the companionway um, hatch because it's got really old and grimy and all the varnish has come off. So first I need to sand it down, then I'm going to varnish. And I, um, we've got this fantastic small sander. It's perfect for me to hold, um, perfect size, and it kind of gets into more of the nooks and crannies. some rivets, aluminium rivets, which fit perfectly in our new sheaves, which we've got from Amel, to put in, in the mast. Right, we knew we had to get our mainsail down, and there's very little time when the wind is in the right direction and there's not much wind. So the window of opportunity was this morning early. So this morning on Sunday, we got up and had breakfast at seven. We were down here by about eight. So we worked out how to get the mainsail down. A little bit complicated, but we worked it out. And she's forgotten how to do a sheet bend. Don't you've forgotten, that's why you've asked me to do it. Do you want double sheet bends? Maybe double. That's a sheet bend. No, the rolling hitch, that's what I was thinking. No, you don't do a rolling hitch. Sheet bends. This is the problem you get when you've got two skippers on board. Yeah, when one's forgotten how to do sheet bends. And one's supposed to be a, an expert. I've done it. What about if we do do a rolling hitch on there and take the yeah. tension off? The pin is actually trapped behind the line. We can't get it out. Okay, so we managed to put it around a different winch. We've right, so forget all of that, what we've just done, because actually we've realised that there's this little bit in here that you can tie a bowline on and bring it down to the winch so you can take tension off like that yeah we pulled it down somehow and then now we can pull the pin untake that off the loop undo that and it's slack now now we're going to mouse a long line onto here is the, the wind, wind in the right direction still yes still in the right direction i'll go you go and get the stuff to sew it on so now we're sewing together a mousing line The wind's picking up a bit. Yes. Ease out the main the other side, because that's the side you want it. Wait, 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 wait. It actually just goes round, round, round there and there, that's all. There's six lines here, and it's got a bowling. That's brilliant. We got it down, and the wind's picking up. That guy's looking at us. Us. Right. It's probably nervous, is it? So this has been whipped on at the end, so we just need to cut those whipping lines and we can tie it. It's funny, isn't it, animals, really? Because on, normally on a boat, you just drop the halyard and that's it, sails down. But there's always something intricate and a little bit complicated on an animal that you have to sort of work out. Yeah, you can understand the logic of it, but it's just deconstructing it, isn't it? Yeah, they've got a bowling. Would you undo that? There's nothing holding it down. Okay, why would it go up though? Because it just might. Okay, well, if I just show you, I'll just hold it there just so you don't panic. While it was laid out, we could inspect it a little bit better. We realised there was a big rip down the um, leech of the sail and also down the foot of the sail. So I don't know whether they're going to be able to repair it or whether we might need to get a new sail. Who knows? And we folded it up, tied it up, and it's now on the deck of our boat waiting for um, our man to um, get a quote on it or send it off to the sale repairers. One thing we didn't realise until we got there was Elvstrom Sales um, have their main factory in the north of Tunisia. And so we thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to get measured up and get a quote for, for a full uh, set of sales. Um, the Elvstrom rep, uh, Heidi, came down and measured up uh, but unfortunately it takes a few months to get the sails made up and fitted 
and we just didn't have the time. Our insurance kind of ran out and we had to get out of there. So maybe we'll go back and get a new set of sails uh, in the near future. But in the meantime, we just patched up the ones we had and uh, had to leave the place. Next is uh, service the Lofrans Tigris Windlass. We had a lot of guests uh, arriving um, over the summer period. Um, and we needed to extend the beds. They were kind of really relaxed about me using their workshop so you could get out of the sun. I had to give my workshop up, so it was kind of funny one year later being back in a workshop making furniture like I used to do back at home for my company, Rat and Pallet. Uh, some of the uh, remote working that I do involves designing furniture still, but still it was good to um, get my hands back on the tools and to be doing something practical. The thing about extending the pilot berth was we then blocked the corridor from the aft cabin into the, uh, the main saloon area. So the other thing we did was have a stainless steel ladder fabricated and attached to the aft cabin hatch so we could actually get in and out of the hatch without crawling underneath the uh, pilot berth. Hello. 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 Thank you. So I'm asking um, if it's possible to make curtains for the first thing. And we have a few things, but this is possible. We've just been quoted £600 to get the whole boat reupholstered and these all remade. It'd be difficult to get a price like that anywhere else, really. All the interior stuff, which just will brighten the whole thing up and just it, it'll replace any sponge that's broken. Yeah, it's a good price. So the work that um, I started in, in Lefkas to uh, repair the, uh, the rope blockers at the bows of the boat has finally been completed in Tunisia. Cut a massive hole in the bottom of the boat with me sat in it. What could possibly go wrong? The floors and the bow lockers was um, completely rotten. Um, all of the plywood had delaminated. thickness of the bilge paint, that's all there is. And I uh, made some blanks. I think it was 12 mil ply. That kind of stayed in place until we got to Tunisia and uh, the guys have uh, taken the cutouts that I did, um, coated them in fiberglass top and bottom to uh, stop any moisture uh, getting into the plywood like it did on the original version and uh, they've fiberglassed it in. And so now we've reinstated the whole thing and they've done a good job. So now they're gonna paint it with bilge paint and uh, it'll be good as new, hopefully. I'm pleased with that actually, pleased with the job. It's a bit worrying, I've turned up today and there's nobody around and it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, I was down earlier at about seven o'clock. Four working days, it's supposed to be back in the water. And we're still waiting for the hole to dry out. Uh, moisture levels are still a bit high on that. Still a bit puzzled by the, the working hours really. 
I mean, things are progressing, but probably not as fast as I would like. Monsef, the uh, project manager, he isn't here today. Um, but he does that, he kind of disappears and then turns up and things kind of get done. And uh, the other thing we decided to do while the boat was out of the water is get the through hull fittings um, replaced. Although uh, one of them was, was fine, so we just, we've left that, but we replaced uh, one of them because it was showing slight signs of corrosion. So it seemed a good opportunity to do that. Uh, but it's good, uh, the value for money here is fantastic. The, uh, the workmanship seems to be as good as anywhere else in Europe. I mean, I've, I've no reason to criticise it at all, really. Um, the pace is a, is a bit slower, um, but in this heat, uh, I don't think I could work any faster, to be honest. Let's see if we can uh, hit that deadline of uh, boat back in the water next Wednesday. Uh, so a lot of things should come together today. We should get the uh, solar arch in place. The gel shield is going on the hull, so that will be five layers of that. The last of the cushions should be turning up. And uh, the polishing started. So, it should be a busy day. It's not good, my English. <laughs> it's good but good today we start with a gel coat. Uh, no, gel coat. Gel sheet this one. It's uh, the first one. This one. Yeah. Um, I suppose in Europe we're kind of used to a more egalitarian approach to work, you know, where the boss is a benevolent sort of guiding influence. In Tunisia it's still quite traditional, you, you get your boss looking over your shoulder at everything you do and giving you um, a right ticking off if you get things wrong. And so Monsef, the project manager, he would pull up his chair, sit down and just watch these guys and make sure that they were done to his exacting standards which uh, I kind of felt sorry for the guys because they don't get paid that much to be honest. So um, it's had uh, five coats of gel shield on now um, and there's been two coats of uh, sealant on the, uh, on the metal keel as well and uh, should be ready for the primer and then the anti after that. Uh, so it's lunchtime so I, uh, I'm going to try the uh, dockyard food meet where the other boys eat. Lebanese. Lebanese. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's, um, it's like a spicy Cornish pasty. Onions and egg. It's got a bit of chilli in it as well. It's really nice. And the uh, World Cup's on in the background as well. I have no idea what they're saying. The um, bath thruster serviced the second time in a year. It was serviced back in September, and then it was there was loads of salt water inside. We tipped it over, and we had the, the mayonnaise effect. So Mr. Monsef has kindly um, serviced it again, um, and this time we've had some more parts fabricated. 
hopefully it'll last the year out this time. So the boat was uh, put in the water yesterday and we had the final um, stages of the solar arch finished off. Um, then uh, there was some dispute about the balance to pay, uh, so we were in the office for about an hour. Um, I I'm hoping it just came down to a genuine misunderstanding. But uh, the way they do business in Tunisia is not with computers and spreadsheets, it's kind of scraps of paper, drawings and a handshake and a, and a nod. And with a language barrier in the way, I guess there is a lot of room for misinterpretation. So. Uh, we paid slightly more than we expected towards the end but we still got some really good work done and still far far cheaper than anywhere else that we would have got in Europe or, or the States or anywhere like that so you know we'll take that on the chin and uh, well, put the market down to experience I suppose. Uh, made some good friends here actually, um, one of the guys who's working here um, really had his he came over with his family to the boat uh, on our final night and uh, we had a good chat and he told us about his dreams of uh, emigrating to Canada with his uh, wife and his young six month year old boy. Uh, yeah, really nice, nice family. It's very tough for poor families without connections in Tunisia. Um, the, the wages are very low, conditions are quite harsh. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a hell of a learning experience, I think for the, for the kids, for, for us. Um, it's good to come to a, an Islamic country. Tunisia is one of the more progressive, liberal Islamic countries. Uh, hijabs seem to be optional uh, amongst the women. You know, there's, there's the ultra conservatives and there's girls walking around with, with long hair and jeans and, uh, you know, they wouldn't look out of place in any Western country, really. There's some really nice, genuine people here. Um, but the last time I was here, actually, I was pickpocketed, so I, I knew to be careful this time. Um, yeah, so it's uh, time to leave now, so it's back to the boat, get some last minute provisioning and uh, off we go. Okay, so we've just um, left Port de Pesh with the boat and um, we're heading back to the marina uh, to get ready um, for our trip up north to Tunisia. We've got no sails on because we've taken them all off to be measured because we do need new sails. That's what they're crashing you can see there that you put the solar panels on top so it collects more sun and the boat looks really weird with it. It makes me feel like we're on somebody else's boat. Somebody else's boat? Is it all different the boat? Yeah. So and me and Dad are going to put all the sails back on because we've got no sails on our sailing yes, boat. Yes. So we've left Monastir and we've headed up north along the coast and now we're in the Gulf of Hammamet. So we've anchored in the Gulf of Hammamet for two nights um, near the old Medina. Be careful, there's rocks here. And um, went to a cafe, a fantastic cafe which we've been to about eight years ago. <laughs> We are back here uh, having a banana split. Ooh, banana split. Oh, is that nice, Terry? 
Pat, don't. No. <laughs> so it was really nice to go back there. So now we're going to the marina in Jasmine um, to get some fuel. We're trying to keep carrying on up the coast because we need to get to Sardinia next. So we're kind of waiting for a weather window. to refuel at Yasmin Marina in Hammamet. Get ready with the stern line as well, please. Hello, hi. Quite close to that boat's engine. Do you take cars? No. No cars? No. Yeah, we tried to stock up in Hammamet thinking that the supermarkets would be really well provisioned because the massive tourist industry there. But, um, the shop we found was a little bit sparse, but they did have a good stock of alcohol. Yeah. Getting ready? Buying contraband. <laughs> it's like the um, prohibition, isn't it? Kiss it first. <laughs> Yay, yeah, good. I okay, got an arm for the beer. Oh, we just rocked up at the um, most expensive marina in Tunisia. Yeah, it's only 30 um, euros or pounds a night, which is kind of still good for the most expensive. But that doesn't include electricity, fuel or Wi-Fi. But anyway, we are not staying here um, because we just came to refuel and it kind of works out that tomorrow is the day to go north, then wait, and then the 11th is the day to cross because the 11th, 12th, it's all from the south and the way. Even if you just come to a fuel dot, you have to go check in and out. I and mean, they keep checking on us, it's great actually. Like the Coast Guard here, they've come three times to see if we're okay on anchor. They kind of like their paperwork, but they wouldn't bother if you didn't turn up. If you turn up, they give you lots to fill in. There's like seven guys in there with machine guns with nothing to do. So, um, you know, they, they, that's why they keep checking on us and they're looking after us. I feel so safe here. I feel like if we got into any difficulty, that the co we could just call the Coast Guard and they'll be right there assisting us. You know, they'll probably even go and get our shopping for us. <laughs> I haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> He's going to be on the beach with the boys. I thought we were going to be shipwrecked. The pirate boats were always out and taking trips out. The kids really loved those boats and they loved the crew because the crew would climb up the masts and, you know, on all the spreaders. And then the kids decided they were going to try some of these tricks as well. We're now leaving the Gulf of Hammamet to our probably last stop before we leave Tunisia, which is Calibier. So it's another 40 miles up the coast. Yeah, we're leaving early so we can hopefully get there around um, late afternoon, really. Uh, we might get a bit of sailing in, but it's only forecast to have like nine knots. So we'll see what happens. This is Calibia, uh, Calibia, and um, it's pretty much a fishing port with the navy base as well over there. Um, it's not obvious where you're going to moor up when you arrive because um, it's so busy. We were told to kind of come alongside this boat, and then another boat left. We were kind of hanging on a bit, but um, might be another one coming alongside us. I reckon. It's the same boat. This is where we're going to be. Yoohoo! <laughs>
up in that very fishy fishing harbour waiting for the right wind to go across to Sardinia but it's um, our eldest and middle's birthday today yes they share the same birthday so three years apart so it's a real special day uh, normally have a big party at home but um, today we're in search of somewhere beautiful and we've walked a bit about half an hour and we found this really lovely beach and um, right on the end sort of tip of Tunisia. It's really colourful. It's a Tunisian hotspot really I think. So now we're going to go and find um, a restaurant to eat in and we know there's one called Monaco Bay restaurants and this must be Monaco Bay and um, there's another one as well so we're going to check out a few and um, yeah see what it's like. So it's our mine and Dari's birthday and we've come here to um, have a something to eat and swim in the swimming pool. Rather than walk all the way round, it was a bit hot and um, we're all a bit tired now, aren't we? And so <laughs> we, just over, we followed the other Tunisian guy and got over the fence and the Tunisians helped us. We just climbed over there, it's so much easier. So you broke in to a naval dock. This is where we live! This is our house, our <laughs> boat is here. Nous avons un bateau ici. So because of the wind, we had a few extra days, which meant, you know, we could do a bit of more cleaning, squeeze in a bit of clean. This time we did the carpets. And, um, and then the customs came. The customs was a little bit more complicated than we thought. They, they seem to have lost a part of the paperwork. So, you know, I thought there could be trouble, but it, it turned out all right in the end. This is it, we're leaving Tunisia. And um, we're going to Sardinia, which is really exciting, because it's Italy, isn't it? Although we've had too much pizza here, so um, maybe there'll be something else. Maybe the ice cream, because it's supposed to be amazing ice cream. We're going to do the longer route from Calibier, which is where we are now. And um, so it will take us about 36 hours, maybe less if it's good wind. So we've been waiting for four days for this weather to turn. But that's what sailing is all about. You can't just go when you fancy, you, what well, you can, but you'll fight against the elements. So it's about kind of... Harnessing the wind, as they say, choosing the right wind and going with it. This is our passage hairstyle, which is plait the hair as much as possible so that we don't have to deal with it when we get to the other side when it hasn't been brushed for days. <laughs> Passages are the best thing for losing weight because you don't eat anything. I think it's Last time so I had a passage, um, my stomach sort of shrinked somehow. Not like the longest passage. I think the longest passage was four days or three. Mine got bigger. Yeah, because you're eating all the food. How much are you Salam. Thank you to all our patrons and people that watch our videos and share them. Now even if you've subscribed you might not receive notification of when our video comes out so please do press that notification bell and you will know when our video comes out straight away because just subscribing doesn't tell you that. Thank you. And if you want to do it, do it. Hey along for the ride, oh, hey I'll stay by your side.